Hi, my name is Tanner and this is Claridge Leather. Welcome to the shop. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go from start to finish building this card wallet. We're gonna talk about the tools and the materials you're going to need. Um, so if, if you've begun leather craft or if you're wanting to begin, um, I'm so glad you're here. Hopefully this answers a lot of your questions. This video is going to be a little longer than usual um, because we're gonna go through every step of the process. In future videos, I will wanna break it down into smaller little bite-sized chunks so we can go a little more in depth into each topic. But we're gonna cover every step of the process today. Um, I will have this broken down into chapters so that you can go to the timestamp um, in the description below. You can skip ahead if there's a, a section that's of particular interest to you. Well, hopefully you got a chance to watch the last video where we designed a uh, template for a card wallet together. So if you did that homework, bring it to class today. Um, so this is a real simple card wallet. It's a bifold card wallet, um, and it can be configured with two pockets or three or four pockets. So it's pretty versatile that way. I think it actually works pretty well. So um, get your pattern. Next thing we're gonna need is some leather. So this is some three to four ounce Corween. It's a Dublin type leather. Um, you'll be pretty good to go with anything in that three to four, maybe four to five ounce range for a card wallet like this. Something that's kind of medium to firm tempered works really well. Um, after that, I like to have a ruler handy for stuff like this. I like to have a wing divider. And this uh, just helps mark the stitch line around the perimeter of the wallet when we're ready to do that. We're gonna need something to cut the leather. Um, a utility knife can work really well. Um, if you have a strop handy, that can actually, you can use that to keep your utility knife super sharp, sharper than new even. Um, this is a Japanese leather knife. It's just another way to cut leather. Um, really boils down to whatever you're most comfortable with. So use what you like. You can use a rotary cutter. Um, there's a lot of fancy little knives, so, um, but a utility knife can work really well. Um, next, we're gonna need something to poke the holes in the leather for the stitching. So these are stitching irons. Um, I really like these. These are the nicest ones I've ever had. I've had some though from Amazon that work um, quite well for 20 bucks for a set. Um, so that's what I used for a long, long time when I got going and they work just fine. Um, Always use some sort of a punch pad. You could use a piece of leather or wood. Um, this is kind of a vinyl material that works pretty well also, and that just protects the teeth of your irons as you punch so they don't break off. Gonna need some needles and thread. Um, this is some thread, it's called twist thread. I kind of like it, it has some bright colors. Some John James harness needles um, and a lighter. Also thread nippers go well with this little setup. I use a scratch awl. Um, as I put the pattern onto the leather, I use the scratch all to scratch around. That just gives me a way to see uh, the markings on the leather to, so I know exactly where to cut. Um, this is a maul. This is a, a Berry King maul. It's one of my favorite tools. It has a leather handle. Uh, anyway, I use that to tap on the end of these irons to poke the holes in the leather. So, uh, Finally, kind of for the finishing touches, this is an edge beveler. This just takes the sharp corner off of the, off the, the edge of the wallet, um, just so that it, it looks a little more polished at the end. And you do that right before you burnish the edges. And when I burnish the edges, um, I found this stuff, it's called Tokenol. It's a cream that you rub on the edge and then you can burnish it in with a, a piece of canvas or some cocoa bolo, like a burnishing stick. This is actually a little Dremel tool with a cocoa bowler, cocoa bowler burnisher on the end of it. And it spins real fast and burnishes that edge up really nicely. Um, finally, some adhesive. This is a water-based adhesive that I think works actually really well. Um, and it doesn't stink up the shop too badly. So I've used that with pretty good success. So I think that's all we need to get started. So we'll roll out our leather, kind of mark out the, the pattern onto the leather and actually get, get cut in here. So. All right, so we'll lay the pattern right on the leather here. I like to use a little weight to help that stay put there as I trace around it. So I'm gonna use my scratch awl. Just kind of carefully trace around the edge here. For these more detailed cuts, um, you might want something with a smaller point on the blade. Um, this is like an, this is an X-Acto knife. Um, this is another knife uh, I found works kind of really well for stuff like this. So. Um, it just is, is nice for getting in and out of these smaller radiuses here, so. So these card pockets are gonna sit on here kind of like this, two on this side, and we'll put also two on the inside. And uh, what we'll do next is bevel and burnish 
the inside edges of these pockets because we won't be able to do that after we stitch it all together. So right now, we'll grab our little edge beveler and kind of go around. This is just a handy little tool. Just takes a little sliver of leather off there. Just enough to kind of break that edge. You kind of see it coming off like a little tiny thread there almost. It's pretty satisfying to do and sometimes satisfying to watch as well. All right, so we're on to the edge burnishing here. Got all our parts cut out and beveled. So I use this token oil cream, like I had mentioned. Um, works well on lots of different kinds of leathers. What you don't want to do is get this stuff on the surface, the top surface of your leather, because it, it's uh, kind of tough to get off. Looks a little messy, so I do it carefully. I try not to get too much on there. And after you get a thin layer on that whole edge, you can grab whatever you want to use to burnish. You can use a, a wooden stick. Some people like that, a burnishing stick. Um, you can use a piece of canvas. I have a piece of, it's more of a nylon material that I got from a canvas supplier. That works really well. Probably the best thing though that I've ever found to, to burnish an edge are some old Carhartt pants. Uh, as soon as you wear them out, don't throw them away. Cut them up into little squares and keep them around because they work really well. And actually the more you use them, they kind of get loaded up and a little more slick themselves and they work really well. All right, so the last thing I want to do before I glue these all together is to put my logo stamp onto one of the pockets. So I'm going to use this Mighty Wonder Press. It's a four ton clicker press. Um, you can use a uh, bench vise or a clamp or things like that. But um, if I were just to put this on here and hit it with a mallet, that would not create the kind of impression I want. So put it in the press and apply a whole bunch of pressure um, and that will create a nice crisp impression on this pocket. Next thing to do before we glue it up is to prepare it for the glue. Um, and when I say that, I mean to rough up the surface of this leather, especially the top surface. The, the flesh side of this leather is usually okay as far as um, adhering uh, with the glue. Um, but we want to rough up the top surface of this leather because it has a little bit of wax on it and that waxy surface is going to kind of repel the glue. So we want to rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper where the glue is going to be. So this will make a really good bond in preparation for the stitches. This Aquilim glue, it's a water-based adhesive that works really well. Um, I like to use this little silicone glue spreader. I, it's a pretty new tool to me. You can certainly get by without it but it allows you to put just a little bit on where you need it. It's a nice way to apply that glue. It's kind of a thin line is all you need. And then you actually want this, this adhesive to dry. I like to let it dry completely or just about completely uh, before you stick the two sides together. All right, so now the adhesive has dried all the way around the edge and you saw that I used that heat gun that just speeds that, that process up so it becomes tacky. It's, it's tacky to the touch, but it's, it's dry and it's clear. So now just carefully line this up on all the edges. Some people like to use little clamps at this point to clamp along the edge. If you have a really smooth faced hammer like this cobbler's hammer, that's also a way to help make that bond more secure. All right, so I glue the other three pockets on. It's kind of starting to look like a wallet now. Um, what we want to do before we move on to stitching though is to true up the edges, make them nice and flush. Um, the glued edges are not going to be perfectly flush with each other. So that looks a little bit rough. So we're on the home stretch here, got all the edges sanded. Um, now we get to use this edge beveler. This is one of my favorite parts. It's a satisfying little process. It takes this kind of rough corner off there makes it smooth in preparation for uh, stitching and then eventually uh, burnishing the edges. So we'll do that on all the uh, exposed corners, the edges, and then I'll use this wing divider. And I'll scribe, or just kind of lightly uh, trace a line around um, about an eighth of an inch or maybe a little bit more. We'll see how it, how it measures out, but that'll be our stitch line around these pockets. Finally, we're gonna take our stitching iron. I'm gonna hang one tooth up over that edge because I wanna put a stitch to catch the top part of that pocket so it's not flapping in the breeze. Make sure that all my teeth are just centered on that line. Give it a little tap here. I'll make sure it goes all the way through, hasn't gone through yet. Now it has. So all those teeth have pierced. Just kind of carefully pull that out. I'm going to catch that last hole with the first tooth there and head on toward the corner. 
So here we're approaching a corner, so I'll find this two tooth tool instead of that eight tooth and just kind of lead myself into the corner. And uh, some people like to use a one tooth. I think a two tooth uh, actually works okay to get around these corners. Sometimes you can kind of just mark your, near your next hole and uh, kind of lead yourself around that corner. All right, now time to stitch. So to stitch, we're gonna need two harness needles, some thread, some thread nippers, and I like to use a lighter. So we need to decide how long our thread needs to be. So my rule of thumb for that is to take the length of the uh, stitch line, and this is about a quarter of an inch thick. I'm gonna multiply the length by five. So five times this length um, should be a safe amount. It's always uh, you know, kind of a good idea to have a little extra when you finish up than to have not quite enough. If, if you ever come up short, you know that that's not a good feeling. So one important skill is to know how to thread the needle. So I'm gonna put this right through the eye of the needle, pull it through, and I'm gonna use the tip of the harness needle to actually pierce this thread. This really only works for braided thread like this. Pierce it right through, and I'm gonna push that on through give it a tug, you can see how it locks it on. So that's not gonna go anywhere. I can pull that with some tension and it's gonna stay right on, right attached to the thread. Okay, so at this point, I've got my thread pierced through the second hole from the end. I've got even lengths of thread on both sides and a needle on each end of the thread. I'm gonna go back up toward the top because I wanna do a double loop on this very top hole so that I can have a two stitches over the top edge of the pocket. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video uh, about how to actually hand stitch. We'll do some more videos um, on that, but um, I think it's a good thing to learn. It's a really basic skill, um, and if you learn to do it well, it's not too tricky, but if you, if you can learn kind of the basics of making a good saddle stitch, it really makes your, your pieces come out nice. So um, I will zoom in here and you can kind of watch how it goes for a few stitches. Um, and then keep an eye out for a video in the future where we get into some more detail. So when we get to the end, I like to leave a little tail here, maybe an eighth of an inch on each of those, or maybe a little bit less than that. And then with the lighter, I'm gonna melt them down, give them a little touch, and then there's not much left to show. So now we're gonna burnish these edges. You can see how the leather is a little bit fuzzy along the edge. We're gonna apply some of this tokenol cream um, to the edges and then you can use either canvas, you can use, this is a piece of nylon, um, like Cordura nylon. This is a, a wood burnisher that goes on a Dremel tool. You can use another kind of a, a wooden slicker like this. Um, so whatever you choose, it's, the process is just to work that stuff, that token oil cream, into the edge. One thing I didn't mention is you might want to take some 800 grit sandpaper or some kind of fine sandpaper after the first round of that token oil cream. Use that sandpaper just to go back and we'll go back with the token oil cream one more time, but you can use that sandpaper to make that edge uh, really nice and smooth. And just kind of keep going back and forth until you're really happy with the way that edge looks. All right, well, I've used up all my elbow grease. I'm happy with the way that the edges look here, so I think I'm finished. So we've got uh, two pockets on the inside and two pockets on the outside here. Um, so I think it's good to go. Um, I challenge you to make one as well. Give it your best shot. It may not be perfect, but that's all right. You can use it and enjoy it. You can give it to a friend. They, they would enjoy it for sure. Um, but the main thing is just to, if you, if you want to get going, uh, the best time to start is now. So hopefully these give you some tools to get started. Um, I really want to know what else you want to learn. If there are any questions you didn't get answered in this video, um, please ask these questions below. Also tell me topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. I can't wait to see you in some more videos. Um, thanks for joining me today. Please subscribe. Tell a friend if they want to learn some leather craft too. Thanks for being here.